Good afternoon. All right. So um, I would like to start this session uh, with a big round of applause for yourself. Come on. Okay. The next session entitles um, "Companies as Agents." So, uh, so let me invite once again our speakers. Mr. Tony Novak, Mr. Steve McCoy, Professor Sai Irandus, and Mr. Niraj Sharan. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for the speakers. All right. Okay. First, the problem that we try to address here is how would how can how can we reverse the um, global warming, the the cost of carbon footprint, and and remain profitable. So the first question is, how can we achieve the equation? Maybe maybe uh, Mr. McCoy can start. Okay, let's start with the easy questions and work up. Um, I think uh, I, I would always say that, at the very least, we need to have a, a conversation about what's going on, um, and that conversation needs to be informed with a higher level of literacy um, about ecological matters and economic matters and the interlinks between. Uh, these then perhaps um, uh, there is already uh, and I think that conversation also needs to be multi-sectoral and uh, multi-disciplinary but but in the real life in reality is it is it easy to do that maybe Mr. Tony? we're talking about remaining profitable remaining while profitable. addressing the problem mm. Well, as I said in my presentation, I mean, from my perspective, and I think, uh, you know, from most people in industry, mm -hmm. uh, energy efficiency is really the, uh, the, the main thing that we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't believe uh, government regulation uh, will do much to address the problem. I don't support a carbon tax. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that will be detrimental to industry to, do, to take measures to address the issues that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And uh, energy efficiency makes sense. We have scarce resources. Okay. Right? Uh, the, the less you use, the more there is to go around. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also, of course, cuts down on emissions, which is what the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the core or the root cause of the problem is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Professor, uh, taking into consideration of um, Asian companies, especially in ASEAN, how far are we to reach to that uh, equation of sustainable and at the same time, uh, you know, uh, reversing the cost of global warming. Um, and, and is it difficult to generalize, of course, because uh, we, we know that there are companies uh, which are very quite advanced in terms mm -hmm. of their thinking and strategies for, for, for issues related to sustainability, but, but mm -hmm. in general, we are far behind many other regions mm -hmm. in terms of uh, how to prepare uh, strategies for a more sustainable future. And that's why, as I mentioned, uh, we need to educate uh, leaders, political leaders, business leaders, mm -hmm. who understand the complex pattern of sustainability at mm -hmm. one hand, but also how things are linked, the political, the business, and other dimensions of, of sustainability. Mm -hmm. And I think one important factor is, is, again, education and capacity building in, in, in that regard. And then, uh, Mr. Sharon, would you like to add up? Yeah, I, I think uh, it could essentially be a two-way approach. One is from the top down, one is from the bottom up. When you look at the top down, we are looking at clarity of policy by government, mm -hmm. uh, making sure the compliance is done by businesses. Mm -hmm. And the bottom up is about awareness that we all believe in. Uh, an awareness by the society, yeah. by consumers, by retail and industry, and that together in a collaborative manner will be able to hopefully get you there. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, I'm opening this floor for questions. Do you have any questions would you like to address to our speakers? So, no question. All right. Can, yes. I, can I add one point which I forgot to mention uh, regarding your question on, on how the companies are, are prepared in, in this region? Uh, we did a small investigation sometime back when we were planning to start our CSR center at AIT among some of the Thai companies, and we yeah. could easily see that for many companies, for instance, CSR is, is uh, equal to charity. You donate money and you build up uh, school or, or small hospitals or medical clinics in small villages. But, but for, it, it's a long-term strategy for, for CSR for companies, of course, related how companies are making the, the money, the, the profit, mm -hmm. and with what environmental impact or social impact. Mm -hmm. So we try to, to work with the companies in order to increase the awareness on what CSR is. It's not a matter of charity only. It's more on, on strategies, how products are, are, are produced. And, and uh, in preserving the future for our, our next generation, we have introduced this carbon trading industry. And Mr. Tony, you are not agree with carbon trading, right? How about, how about you? Carbon trading? Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of agnostic. I think we're at the stage where we need to try just about everything that we possibly can. But I actually want to go back to something I said previously. So I said that we need to have conversations. And then you asked me whether that's easy. And actually, it's actually not that easy. Um, because in our conversations, one of the things we need to address is uh, kind of dysfunctionality that we've got used to. And uh, in Malaysia, for example, uh, we have uh, the government planning to start a coal fire plant in Sabah uh, for very real reasons that the people in East Sabah don't have regular electricity supply. But one of the reasons why they don't have uh, regular electricity in the 21st century is because the grid uh, is broken. One of the reasons why the grid is broken is because the energy company in Sabah uh, operates uh, at a loss, so they can't maintain the grid. And there are, there are historical and uh, political reasons why having that conversation uh, is actually difficult. And so it is almost the easiest thing in the world for politicians to build political capital to just stick a 300 megawatt coal fire plant uh, and be done with it. Um, and then call it clean coal technology when that doesn't exist uh, yet. And we still certainly don't know the cost of it. So uh, these conversations sometimes that address dysfunctionality are difficult. Uh, we heard earlier in the first session about uh, the EU negotiations with Malaysia about uh, illegal logging, for example. Now that's a great, uh, uh, that's a great move. Uh, the US are doing the same thing under the Lacey Act. Um, uh, and uh, you know, we've we got to thank uh, uh, the EU um, uh, consumers and American consumers for pushing governments to come up with that legislation. But uh, the reality on the ground in Malaysia, for example, is that the civil society community, the NGOs, have uh, walked away from the negotiations um, uh, for the last two years, which then kind of poses some kind of... Uh, difficulty with the legitimacy of the, the, the legislation that will um, eventually come out, I, I'm sure it will, and I think we need <coughs> to get these negotiations uh, concluded, but then it will not kind of do what it promises to do uh, if there's not this uh, inclusive stakeholder engagement. So having these conversations are really important and they are not easy. Um, so, uh, yes, that's what I wanted to add. Okay, uh, that's the bell. I think we have come to a conclusion. Uh, we have come to, not yet, we have one more question. Do we, do we have any questions from the floor? Thank you all panelists, but uh, you've got to help me. I did this event because I'm making a report for the United Nations. So 
Every panelist has to answer this question before it is finished. Give me a solution because I had a lot of stuff. <laughs>